Hello and welcome back to Jay's Studio. Uh, today's topic uh, in this uh, series of videos on uh, calibrating your ER20 printer is going to be about retraction tuning. And retraction tuning uh, is something that you're going to struggle, you know, not struggles wrong, the wrong word, I, I really didn't want to use that word, but you're going to to work with retraction tuning uh, on, a, on a constant basis. Why, does, why is that? Because retraction is one, it's a great tool for your, uh, for your extruder to use to move, uh, both relieve pressure and the hot end when we don't need uh, just melted plastic oozing and globbing on the module like at the end of a layer or before a travel move or something like that. Um, and additionally, we want to tune it such that when we remove that pressure and kind of retract the filament so as not to ooze and blob, that we're also at the same time not leaving a bunch of strings and 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 things all over the model uh, so you know this combination of p either poor retraction and or not correctly dialed in temperature uh, which is our next thing we're going to do with the the, the, the temperature tuning but uh, these things can combine to cause you problems with stringing especially on models with small features in which you're going to be doing a lot of like moves that are just very quick deposits of plastic and then picking up and moving somewhere else so uh, retraction super, I hope, I've, hope that's enough to, to convince you that tuning your retraction is super important uh, when trying to get your 3D prints to look right. Um, we again are looking at Teaching Tech 3D Printer Calibrations pages. Uh, Teaching Tech has a YouTube page. You should go, you should like, you subscribe. He does a great job of doing a lot of this, uh, um, a lot of this kind of instruction in a generic way uh, with regards to thinking about printers in general. Uh, what we are going to concentrate on is the ER20 and ER20 settings. So tuning retraction is going to require us to come into the tool and generate like we have before, and we're going to do again, we're going to in, uh, uh, generate a G code uh, that we're going to dump on a micro SD card and then print to see how we're doing. I tell you right now that retraction tuning is going to tune at least two variables. It's going to tune the amount of retraction, the millimeters of retraction that happened during a retraction move. So that's the amount that's pulled back, and then, or the amount that, that the extruder itself will spin its wheel back to, re, to kind of pull the uh, filament out uh, or relieve pressure in the hot end. And the other variable is going to be the speed that that move happens. So this will require doing at least two prints. You might find that you do more than that uh, just to be able to get yourself squared, squared away uh, knowing that you're doing the right thing. Uh, I've talked about this before, but again, I'm just going to throw it out there that here at the top, you're going to want to put your start G code uh, that you want uh, to use. I copy and paste uh, my uh, start G code from Cura for the ER20. Um, this is an official start G code that uh, everyone puts out there. Um, I just do the whole thing uh, here just because I like the way that that start G code actually draws a priming line at the front of my print bed and gets everything ready to go before it actually starts doing the model. Then you would just cut and paste that right into here. You're going to need to put bed dimensions here, 250 by 220, as always. Uh, your hot end temperature. Um, I put 230 here just to make sure we have good adhesion, but then after the first layer, I'm going to sit and watch the first part of this print. Um, after the first layer, I'm going to dial it down to what I think is probably correct. And I don't think you can go wrong. Uh, we'll find out in the temperature tuning in the, in the next video how we're doing with uh, with this. But I don't think you can go wrong just estimating either 210 or 215 as your hot end temperature uh, for PLA. Um, and just kind of put that in there. Um, like I said, I, have, I will dial in 230 now for the G-code. But then after the first layer prints on my print bed, I will actually adjust the nozzle down to 215 for the rest of the print. Bed temperature, um, again, set it for how you want it. I put it at, for these very short prints, I'll put it at 65 to ensure that they stay adhered. Usually I would have it at 60 C. Um, so here, I will change this on the part, or the, the cooling fan. What's gonna happen with the cooling fan? And I'm gonna say, I want it to be 50% from layer three. Why? Because cooling, especially if you have your fan on at 100%, has a way of masking or traction problems, right? Especially if you've got, uh, like we did, uh, if you remember from one of the very first videos, I showed the modified uh, fan duct that we put on this ER20 printer 
right here in the room. And the that fan duct is actually doing a pretty good job of putting air on both the hot end and the extruded plastic immediately after it's extruded. Good cooling is necessary for good printing. Flip side is, is it might hide and make it very difficult to find uh, uh, places that it, retraction is not working as well as it should. So I recommend doing the 50% thing from some layer, uh, uh, maybe even layer five. Just get the get the first like uh, boundary layers of this print, which is going to look like this, um, and I'll show you the completed prints here in a second. But then once it actually does the tower, you can have it on at 50%, which should keep things working all right, but also let you see where stringing is happening uh, more uh, more prolifically than other places. So then now you're going to say, okay, what about, uh, what about the actual variables? And this was the first print I did here. Um, I just put everything at 40. Um, uh, so let me, let me stop right here to say that um, retraction tuning uh, for me on the ER20 required two tools. And yes, this was the first print that I did uh, where I, re I basically went between 5.5 and 3 on my millimeters. She did 40, 40 seconds, or she's 40 millimeters a second for speed. And I will tell you, I got very little difference. When I printed that, it was very frustrating. I really couldn't tell what was going on uh, between the segments, um, and it wasn't helping. So I took Teaching Tech's uh, recommendation and followed their link at the bottom of the screen to a very different type of retraction calibration tool. Um, which is this calibration generator 1.3.4 um, and you can just follow that link right off the teaching tech page which is linked in the comments below. This is a great tool it also takes a little bit longer to print um, and it's uh, uh, quite a bit more shall we say complicated in the sense of looking at it or, or, or let's just say that complicated isn't the word there's just more very uh, there's just more going on in this print than in the simple print on the teaching tech side. Um, what it does is it actually generates, and again, you have some of the very same variables here, right? Uh, so you, you just go in and answer the variables, and in fact, it will tell you at the bottom on the notes, it says, hey, just start with, start with the default settings to begin with, and then go from there. So I did. I printed this very interesting, uh, let me get away from this so you can actually see it. I printed this very interesting uh, looking kind of box, which is kind of wobbly because it doesn't stick together very well. And what this box does um, is, it, or what this G-code generator does, is it basically looks at a number of different settings, in this case, ranging from at the origin, which is where my thumb is right now. The origin was like a 0.5 millimeter retraction distance all the way around the square to where my thumb is now, where it was like, oh, I don't know, eight millimeters of retraction distance. So it basically went all around this box using different, you know, in com continuing to increase the millimeters of retraction. And then the height went from the bottom, which was about 10 millimeters a second, all the way to the top, which was like, I, I set it up for the top to be about 60 millimeters per second. Um, so what do you do when you print this? Basically, you're looking all around it to see where the box printed the best. And for me, uh, very interestingly, um, it printed the best starting at about two millimeters of extraction, which would be right about, let me see if I can indicate it well. I may have to move the camera here. I'll do this. Right about in here, 2.5 also looked good, all in this like 40 to 50, 55 millimeters per second range. And then very interestingly, it looked really good around this 4 to 4.5, maybe even 5 millimeters of retraction distance. And again, at these upper speed ratings between like 35 and 55 or 60 millimeters per second. Um, so how am I going to get those values? Uh, don't worry about it because when you generate that G code in this site, when you generate the G code, open up the G code in a text in in, in a Notepad, and it has a big like it'll start with a big uh, graphic showing you what you're about to print, so you can refer to that graphic when you want to look at your box that's printed. So based on this box that I printed, 
I printed another box. Not as big. I only did 12 layers per setting instead of 25 layers per setting. And I had this, I had this box start uh, much, it didn't start at 0.5, it actually started at 2. Um, and then went all the way to something like 5 or 6, 5.5 I believe. Uh, so some, something around 2 and then around about 5.5 millimeters of retraction and basically from 30 to 30 to, uh, to, to 50 or so millimeters per second. And with this, I was able to get myself in the ballpark and say, hey, I'm somewhere between three and a half and five millimeters, maybe, maybe even down as low as three millimeters to five millimeters of retraction distance and somewhere between uh, 35 and 50 millimeters per second was where this print was the best. You notice it's a lot better than the original one as far as like the, um, the retraction moves and the, the moves outboard of the box itself. So this helped me get to a place where then I could print a couple of the actual retraction towers. Um, now going back to the other site, uh, I was able to come back here and revise my settings uh, that I printed at to get a couple of retraction towers. And just so that you can see, it's printing a retraction tower right now for me too. And this is for that retraction tower that's getting printed right now is post K, K advance or linear advance, uh, which we will talk about in a later video. Um, so looking at this uh, particular temperature tower, um, I was actually pleased to see that there was a change um, and that at the lower settings, obviously there was worse stringing than as we got up towards the top. And with this print, I was able to, to determine that the segment that did the best was the segment with four millimeters of retraction. Then I printed another one. Let me grab it. And here, I was again, I mean, there was less, because the, because the millimeters of, the millimeters of retraction was set, there was less uh, um, variation. But looking closely at it, I was able for me to determine that the best, um, the best speed, let's see if I can get it. There we go. The best speed was the third from the top, which wound up being 45 millimeters per second. So notice that I had to print for this retraction tuning uh, to arrive at four millimeters and 45 millimeters per second, I had to print four models. I had to print two of the boxes, which are the, which are the more complicated, uh, uh, retraction tuning boxes, and then I had to print two of the towers, the retraction towers, to be able to figure out that my retraction tuning needs to be four millimeters per second, I'm sorry, four millimeters, and the speed of 45 millimeters per second. And then we will use that value in further uh, calibration tests uh, to come. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, the next video will be on temperature tuning.